Hello and welcome to the 2021 Honours Performance Series. My name is Peter Cockett and I am Associate Professor in the School of the Arts at McMaster University. The Honours Performance Series features original work from graduating students from our Theatre and Film Studies program. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that McMaster University is built on Indigenous land, specifically that of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and other nations, acknowledged and unacknowledged, recorded and unrecorded, within lands protected by the Dish With One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Because we are not gathered together in McMaster's Black Boss Theatre to watch these performances, I, I want to acknowledge that a virtual audience is also a geographically diverse one. For instance, I am currently talking from Tecaranto, the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. And it is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We would like to encourage you all to reflect on your own location. This map is interactive and can be found at native-land.ca. We'd also encourage you to visit websites of local First Nations to learn more about their histories, traditions, and living concerns. In this year of the pandemic, the students have pivoted to digital performance. Together, we have tried to maintain the spirit of live performance and resisted the inclination to simply make short films. Their innovative responses to the challenges of distance creation have been extremely impressive. Each student has developed their own form and style of digital performance that aligns with the theme of their show. I hope you enjoy their work as much as I've enjoyed working with them. Tonight, we are happy to present Sung Cho's Lost in Translation. All right, let's get started. I have a problem and oftentimes it's not very easy to find the source of the problem. And there's a number of reasons for that, but uh, what I've been told is to look for symptoms of the problem where you wouldn't expect it. And I suppose this room is as good of an example as any. You can look around. There are no photos, no, no posters. I mean, there's a couple of wards here and there, right? But no photos. Well, 
no new photos. There's only ones of me in elementary school. Which doesn't seem too odd at first, but then you start to think. Why are there no new photos? Did I die? I didn't die. I mean, I almost did, but that's an entirely different story. But the photos, what I'm trying to say is, they, they freak you out. Who has a portrait of themselves in the room like this? Is this, like, my funeral photo? Am I the son of a fascist dictator? It's not very clear. And I don't think it can be both. Well, despite all that, I think most people, myself included, would call this space my room. Whatever that means. And I suppose it's somewhat true. Um, I used to love hiding in places like this when I was a kid. Mostly for attention, but it kept me un entertained and out of trouble, so my grandmother didn't really have a problem with it. Uh, when it didn't come out um, for meals or things like that, sometimes I think she was just messing with me by not coming to get me. At least I hope she was just messing with me, but yeah. But I haven't done anything like that in, um, in a really long time. takes me back. I remember why I stopped hiding. We just moved here, and it was one of the first days at the new school. I didn't know anyone there except for my sister, I guess, and at recess some of the kids were playing manhunt on the playground, and I asked if I could join, and they said yes. And I was... Terrible. Just, just awful. I mean, I was chubby, I had no stamina, but, um, it still had fun. The problem came up when I tried to get my sister to join. I asked one of the kids on the playground, and they said no. And when I asked why, I was told that I couldn't keep playing either. And I kept, I asked, why is all of this happening? And you know what this kid says to me? This this five, six-year-old kid looks me dead in the eyes and says, No, you're brown. <laughs> Is it bad if I get offended by that? Is it bad if I don't? Like, it's not even the right kind of racist. <sighs> well, right or wrong, the school certainly had an opinion about it. Kid got suspended. And eventually they switched schools for a number of other behavioral issues, but this was one of them. My sister and I still remember, though. Uh, we still laugh about it today. Like, where did he get... Brown.
I suppose some of you are wondering what it is I'm eating here. It would be fair to assume that it's important somehow, but it's not. It's just breakfast. I suppose it is somewhat nostalgic, though. You know what would make this? Bowl of rice, mm. some kimchi, a little bit of ojingo, which is this kind of pickled squid, uh, and a nice fried mackerel. <clears throat> now that, that is a breakfast. I suppose it isn't for everyone though. Um, I remember one time someone asked me what my favorite breakfast was and they were thinking the continental breakfast, right? Things like bacon and eggs, waffles, that sort of thing. So when I said myokuk and some side dishes, yum, they had no idea what I was talking about. They had no idea how to pronounce the stuff I was talking about. So they asked me, is there an English name? And I said, yeah, sure. Let's call it seaweed soup. Make it easier for you. But if we're being reductive, what is a waffle? Is there an easier name? Why do we call it a waffle? Why not call it boxy batter? Which is ridiculous, of course. A waffle is a waffle. What are you, crazy? Myokuk is traditionally eaten on people's birthdays. And as a kid, I never understood why. It turns out that uh, miyok, seaweed, it has uh, nutrients that are really good for mothers who have just given birth, right? So it's not necessarily a celebration of your birth, but of the person who birthed you. And in my household, it wasn't my mother who actually made it all the time. It was my grandmother, which makes sense since she was the one that did a lot of the cooking when uh, my sister and I were growing up. <sighs> Nowadays though, we don't really have it that often. Never understood why, but maybe my mother doesn't like making it. Maybe she likes eating other things for breakfast. Nowadays, we have things like croissants and, and Nutella and <sighs> eggs, which is still, you know, very Korean. Nothing is more Korean than a fixation on Western culture. You know, the amount of spam in the food we eat. Oof. Whoa. I was weird. Uh, I was gonna do a whole thing with the the photo, but I guess we should just move on. What the? What? Ah. Why is this? Oh, hey, I haven't seen this in a long time. 
there um, used to be a tube that you blew into, and you could play uh, notes. It was an air-powered piano. That's pretty cool. Some old Legos under there. Jackets. Huh. What is this? When was this taken? <laughs> Must have been before we were born, huh? Never seen them this carefree. It's weird, the house has tons of photos, albums, and albums of photos of me and my sister, but nothing of my parents. I mean, we have, like, uh, family photos, we have wedding photos, that kind of thing, but things like this? I wonder why it's tucked all the way back here. Okay, that is not funny. What? What is... What is going on? Jeez. Uh, gotta... Okay, no. We can, we can fix this. We can fix this. Um... And, uh, yeah, we can film the bathroom. Uh, let's just get that set up here. Okay. Yeah, I wonder if, um, I lost anything here. Anything I left in my pockets. Uh, see, Appa likes to check my pockets before he puts stuff in the laundry, and, uh, it all always ends up here. It looks like there's not much, though. He's very diligent like that, and I think it's because, uh, he has to check the pockets for clients at the store, and they don't like it when things get ruined in the wash. Which is code for they don't like it when we ruin it, so well. There's a lot of detail that goes into dry cleaning, I guess. Uh, not that anyone would really know that. Uh, it also explains why Alpha's so good at it because, well, he has years of experience, but also, uh, even before he had all that experience, he was used to. Being diligent and grinding things out, you know, he was an academic, and it's not the same type of job, but the, the, the work ethic is important. I mean, not that you would know that he was an academic either, right? See, uh, when we lived in Korea, both my parents had different jobs. Uh, Alma, she was in finances. I, I, I think she was a banker. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really sure. I was, I was four years old. Okay, so give me a break. Uh, but so, something along those lines, like a banker or something. And now that we've moved to Canada, she's a small business owner, which doesn't sound like too bad of a transition uh, until people ask what the small business is. And as soon as you say, it's a dry cleaners, it's suddenly very obvious and um, less impressive. 
tells you about what people expect of our family, right? When I was a kid and uh, teachers and uh, other people's parents met my parents, you know what they would say to me? They would say, oh, uh, your parents have very good English or, uh, oh, they have a good accent. Like those are the things that really jumped out at them. Those are the notable qualities and uh, things that were actually impressive. And I, I could have been upset by that. And I was. I was upset about that. But then I started to think. I realized that despite the fact that I have the same name, I have the same skin, eyes, hair, I, I have the same passport as my parents, none of those people ever said any of those things about me. I guess maybe that's why those photos are back there. Wait, wasn't that from my room? And, oh great, yep, and of course. Makes sense, I guess. <laughs> Tried to pick the least dumb looking photos. Uh, but, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, I look really silly in a lot of these. And I'm not just saying that because uh, I'm embarrassed or anything. Um, I just didn't know how to post for them. All right? What do I mean by that? Um, here, there's a textbook example. Take a look at this. All right. First grade. Sixth grade. Notice anything? I forgot something. Forgot how to smile. And, and people tried to help, right? Tried to say stuff like, "Oh, you should smile with your eyes. You should smile with your 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 mouth, or your your uh, smile with your mouth." Yeah, which is very useful advice. It's kind of like telling someone to do a pull up with their arms. I know what I'm supposed to do. Doesn't make me any more capable of doing a pull-up. <sighs> but it's not just smiling. I think I just don't like photos. Remind me of things I don't want to remember. Remind me that I look different from all the kids I grew up with. Reminds me that my mom and dad get harassed by people who think they can push around the immigrant workers because they don't know any better, right? Reminds me that I didn't speak enough Korean with my grandmother before she died. You think you could just look at a photo and be like, oh, it's, it's like I was right there. No, you can't. I, I, how do you explain that to someone? How do you explain your relationship? This person was a, was a second mother to you. They, they gave everything for you, and you couldn't even dedicate a fraction of the time that they spent on you on saying thank you properly because you barely spoke your own language. How 
How do you explain that? That kind of shame. The shame that you have in your own culture, your own weird food, and your weird customs, your weird name that you never use, so you don't even know what your real name is supposed to be. Not again. Sorry about that. I guess things got a little out of hand. Guess I just wanted some fresh air. Welcome to the backyard. It's not much now, but in the summer, it'll be really something. Appa puts a lot of work into making it look good. And we help from time to time, but it's mostly him. <laughs> Except this um, little strip of dirt here. That used to be my grandmother's garden. I used to grow things, but um, it was her little pet project. She grew all types of things. Um... Flowers, plants that she thought looked nice, plants that she used in her cooking. 
plants, well, plants from home. I remember some of the plants she grew. Uh, she grew gochu, which is like Korean green pepper. Looks like a jalapeno, doesn't taste like a jalapeno. And genip, which is kind of like a... Uh, it's, I think it's a poppy leaf, poppy plant. Um, it looks like a big wide mint leaf and it kind of tastes savory and herby. Uh, we mostly used it as a, a wrapper to bundle up meats and veggies when we did barbecue. And growing all this stuff here for Korean food might make you think that the garden is a little piece of home. And it is, but it isn't. I mean, these pots and pans Sure, they contain things that are kind of Korean, but they're in a yard that fills up with leaves and acorns every fall and snow every winter, and those aren't really things that we had in Korea, at least not where I come from. We, did, we barely got any, and here we have to deal with it every year. So I guess... It wouldn't be correct to say that they're a piece of home because by being here, they've become something else entirely. And you can tell a lot about the neighbors' lives just by looking over the fence, too. I mean, you can see there's a play set. You can assume these people have kids. I remember one year... They left their birthday decorations up for almost a week or something. And just across the other way, you might see a little piece of blue peeking over the fence. Right there. Right there. You see that little black and blue rod? Wouldn't blame you if it couldn't. It's, uh... The tip of a trampoline. So you can assume that they have kids too. Right? Over this way. We have a patio. It's got little benches and cushions and tables. And it's very charming. Sometimes they have dinner parties over there with friends. neither of them really grow anything in their gardens. At least, not that I know. Well, maybe they do, and maybe they don't. And that's okay. Because if I wanted to know, I could just go over and ask, right? I could ask if Their grandmother had a garden. I could ask if they grew up eating the food that was grown right at their own backyard. Could be fun. But it could be awkward, too. They could get angry or annoyed about trees and property and shoveling. The neighbors that used to live here, they they didn't get along with our family at all. They called the cops on us once, and that was a very unpleasant interaction. But the new people are great. They're, they're two kids. Uh, always say hi to my mom and dad when they get back from work. Make them these cute little handwritten thank you cards on Christmas and Easter. And it's, it's very wholesome. 
Their family's different. But I suppose everyone is. Maybe I should go. I could just go ask. Maybe I'm overthinking it. It is just a garden, after all. <laughs>